Jalston Fowler, welcome into the game in in Tuscaloosa. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Um, just hanging out watching a little TV, man. <laughs> Good, good. Now, now, Justin, I've told you this before. Uh, you and I share the same last name, so I've always claimed you as a cousin, if that's okay. Yeah, that's cool with me, man. Hey, as long as you're doing the right thing with your name. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no doubt. Listen, uh, uh, gr- growing up in this state, were you a Bama fan? I mean, did, did you grow up as an Alabama fan? Yeah, my um, teacher had, had transferred me, um, to, converted me to Alabama fan young um, in the third grade, so... Yeah, I started feeling for Alabama ever since third grade. And you committed early uh, to the University of Alabama. It was uh, uh, back in, in February of the, of the signing class would have been almost a year away. You committed early uh, to the University of Alabama. Yeah, because they was the only school that gave me a chance to showcase my talent. I mean, everybody was, wasn't re- willing to take that chance on me because I didn't play my senior year. But Coach Saban gave me a chance because he seen how hard I worked at the camps and all that. Those types of things. He seen what I done my um my junior year on the football field. Justin, I, I want to talk about what you're doing now to prepare for the NFL Combine. Uh, sort of walk us through this preparation phase as you get ready to go and represent the University of Alabama next week at the NFL Combine. All right, man, it's been crazy. I mean, just working out every day, just uh, working on like most of the NFL drills in the morning. Going back at, in the afternoon, working on cardio, trying to get the weight down. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm doing. And I, I'm happy that I went to the Senior Bowl because I got to see it firsthand of what those guys like to do, the questions they like to ask you, and how they how they operate in the NFL. What was the craziest question that they asked you? Um, I mean, they they it wasn't really any crazy questions, but they just asked me about my lifestyle and people who I like to be around and things like that and that nature. Justin Fowler right now inside the game here in Tuscaloosa. When you look at the National Football League and you understand, you know, the, the maybe the expanded role, uh, would you like to expand your role at the next level? I mean, are, do you feel like you're capable of doing that at the next level? Yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm capable of doing that at the next level. I mean, it's pretty much easy once you get the, get the offense down and learn what they want you to do and how they want you to do it. I mean, everything becomes easy. Once you get that playbook in your hand, you you get to see everything they want you to do, and it's written down there right now on paper. Justin, do you, as a fullback, now I've, I've got a couple of friends uh, that, that have played here. LaRon McClain uh, was was a big fullback here at the University of Alabama, grew up in the shadows of Bryant Denny Stadium. Uh, Martin Houston, a friend of mine that I had lunch today with, and uh, he was a fullback back in 1992. Uh, as, as I look at fullbacks, do you take pride – into destroying uh, a defensive back or a linebacker. I mean, I mean, do you? Uh, seems like fullbacks just have that mentality that they don't mind uh, sort of laying the hit as well. Yeah, that's my favorite thing to do to lay somebody out on the field and have everybody just cheer and see what you did to the guy. And um, like on TV, you will just hear the commentators just, "Oh, he just laid him <laughs> out." That that just be the biggest thing for me. That that's my pride and joy of everything. Just it, hearing everybody just well. Letting everybody see that you you physical and you're not scared to go in there and hit somebody. Justin, uh, do you remember the first time you put the crimson jersey on? Uh, what, what year was that? That was 2010, I think. Nah, I, I forgot what. That was 2010, but I forgot who 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 we were playing. But do you, uh, you remember, remember that first time? You remember running out in the tunnel. Uh, someone that grew up in the state knows what that crimson jersey means. Uh, uh, I can imagine that's just probably one of those things that you go back to running out of the tunnel the first time, and those things that you'll miss by playing football in, in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, that, it was crazy my first time running out of the tunnel because you hear all those fans. You're not used to all those fans because in high school you have like a small amount of fans, and get to see like a hundred thousand people just cheering. For a team, that's that's crazy. When you look at Nick Saban and you look at what he means for one, the University of Alabama, uh, college football in general, what's Nick Saban like off of the field? Help us get to know Nick Saban that we don't see the way the players see him off the field. Man, Coach Saban, a cool guy. I mean, you get him in the room, he he talks real business with you. He he's like a, a parent for real. I mean, a parent that's going to tell you the right things and what you need to hear. 
to make yourself a better person all around. So he's, I say he's a pretty good guy, and I love him, and I thank him for everything he's done for me. He gave me a chance, and if you really get to know him, you'll see that he's a good guy, too. Does he ever relax? And, nah, he's always busy. I mean, that's just his nature. He always been like that since he's been coaching. I mean, even in LSU, even in the pros, he's always working, trying to make things and, uh, or even try to perfect things. Uh, Justin Fowler right now in, inside the conversation. All right, Justin, g- give us the Nick Saban on the field. Can you impersonate Nick Saban? I mean, can, can you uh, g- give us what Nick Saban sounds like uh, when, when he's when he's mad at Justin Fowler or maybe he's happy at Justin Fowler? Can you impersonate Nick Saban? No, nah, I'm not good at it. Um, Christian Jones probably be the best guy to do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, well, that, that maybe that's, uh, that's a future opportunity. All right, so now let's get to know Lane Kiffin a little bit because we never get to hear from Lane Kiffin uh, just a couple of times a year. What's it like, Lane Kiffin, as an offensive coordinator uh, in, in the new system that he brought here to Tuscaloosa? Oh, man. Um, Co- I mean, Coach Kiffin, he's a great guy. But Coach Kiffin, he's the type of guy that – on his offense, he want all like if you play the X receiver, he wants you to know what the H receiver's doing. Wants you to know what the Z receiver doing. He might even want you to know what the tight end is doing on the specific play. And that's just what made his offense different because you you can stick anybody in any position at any time, and you can you can't you you can't miss a beat with those guys because if you miss a beat, some some wrong. But I'm I'm happy that he did come into. Coming to Alabama gave me a chance to show my versatility because me as an H back, I had to learn what I learned, had to learn the blocking abilities, um, the tight end routes, the wide receiver route, um, how to block on the perimeter for the wide receivers on screen. So it, it was great for me. Justin, when you look at a record-setting year for for you guys, uh, offensive side, I mean, I mean, you, you, there was numbers that were put up that. Has has never been put up, and, and you look at the mm-hmm. offense uh, that Alabama brought to the table, uh, record setting year. When you go back, was there something Lane Kiffin did? I mean, did he simplify the offense? What what was the reason you guys picked up on it so fast? Because generally, it takes time uh, when an offensive coordinator brings in his new system. It did not with you guys this year. I mean, it just he just put in some things that that he wanted to do different, but it was pretty much the same offense. But like I was saying. If you if you're a receiver in his offense, you have to know what everybody is doing. But basically, it was the same thing. And with that, everybody already knew what, what we were doing on offense. It's just he had to come in and make his adjustment, and we we adjusted really quick because we knew what he was doing, and we knew what we were doing. When you look at Blake Sims, what was it about Blake Sims who? You guys rallied behind, and I know if Jacob Coker would have been the quarterback, you guys would have rallied behind him. But what was it about Blake Sims that that made the team play for him, behind him as a quarterback? I mean, all the doubters. I mean, he had a lot of doubters. Like everybody was just saying he couldn't play. Uh, they even told us that a little kid said Blake played quarterback this year. We would lose every game. We would not um, be good this year. So that that kind of pushed us to rally behind him because we all wanted to see him do good and persevere and show that show the world that he could be the quarterback that he that he became. It's unique. I I okay that so so you like a doubter. Uh, you you like somebody to tell you that you're not able to do something and then you go out and try to prove them wrong. Yeah, I love the guy who they who they say they can't do it. And he comes to prove everybody wrong and actually does better than. People expect it. Well, Justin, I, I guess we'll start right now. You know, I don't think Alabama's going to win a game next year. I mean, I mean, let's start it now, right? Yeah. No, I'm just. I, I, <laughs> you can just go out there and prove them wrong. It's just showing that you can win. That's that's a thing. I, I'm just I'm just teasing about that, but I mean, <laughs> hey, if it works as far as motivation, hey, I'm all for it. So uh, you know, I expect Alabama. Maybe they'll win a couple of games. Hey, let me talk about the young players. Uh, who's going to fill the voids when, when, when you look at the young players offensively? 
Two out of the 11 are gone. Uh, excuse me, only two return. Uh, you've got to replace your starting fullback, Charleston Fowler, your tailback, your wide receivers, three offensive linemen. Give us a little bit of insight into some of these younger guys that are behind you guys uh, that will try to fill the role of uh, the void of, of y'all uh, that have now departed for the National Football League. I mean, Coach Saban, that's why he recruits. That's why he's the best recruiter in the, uh, in the world. I mean, you got a guy, nice winder. He's the tough, hard-nosed guy who would go in there and search you out, dig you out like me. I mean, he's not scared of contact. He's crazy. I, I call him night night poop. So he, he'll go in there and tell some heads off. And you got Derek, the big man. The, I call him the monster. I mean, I don't think too many people can hit that guy one-on-one. Once he get his mindset that nobody can – can mess with him on the field. He'll he'll be a great player. Then you got Rob Foster. I mean, that guy. He haven't had his chance yet, but when he get his chance, I think he's gonna be a big part of the offense. Uh, you got Kenyon coming back, so you know he was a big key to our offense. You can put him anywhere. Put him at receiver, running back. He he just explosive. And you got Jacob. Jacob was a great quarterback. I mean, he came into the game when Blake was down most of the season. Well, whenever Blake got hurt, he came in and did a great job. So, I mean, it's, it's really no void in the offense. I mean, that's why Coach Saban recruits. What's he want, he's going against the best, the best of the best. What's the biggest difference between Jacob Coker and Blake Sims? I don't say it's not. It's not a big difference. It's just Blake can is more more mobile. He can move around in that pocket and do some things like scramble because his speed he can get he can get the first down for you. But Jacob is a big physical quarterback. He, 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 I say he's like the T-Bow type, the kind that search, search guys out and trying to run them over. So, now, so Coker is a is a also a multiple guy too. So, uh, wow, that's uh, that's it's unique to know to see uh, the guy that that's that, that big, a little bit mobile, and uh, certainly uh, Jalston Fowler. Let me talk about next week. What's the plan? So, sort of walk us through the itinerary as you prepare for the NFL Combine. Yeah, I leave on the 18th. Um, I got to be at the airport at seven o'clock. Um, when I fly to Indianapolis, I don't, I don't know the itinerary from there on out, but I plan to just be have a busy schedule. Justin, uh, we really appreciate you for uh, being a part of our show. Uh, I've enjoyed watching you play football. I've been watching uh, you lead this football team and, and be a leader, uh, someone that uh, a lot of people uh, love as watching you play. And the word Nudie comes up. Where, who gave you the name Nudie? My dad gave me the name Nudie. Um, as a little baby, he said he used to walk around the hospital saying, "This my Nudie baby," and so the name stuck with me throughout my childhood and even even in my adult days. Well, it, it's it's one of those things that uh, we, we we kept uh, making the comment and 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 callers and and people on Twitter. Uh, Nudie's going to be on. Uh, Jocelyn, I've enjoyed watching you play football at the University of Alabama. I wish you nothing but the best at the next level. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a couple of minutes of your time to talk a little Alabama football tonight. You're welcome, man. I, it's anytime, man. Um, roll top ever. Uh, hey, no doubt about it. Uh, and hey, we're we're not going to win any games next year. I mean, so if you're talking hey. to any of those former players, just or the players now, just tell them we're not going to win. Motivate them to get hey. through this off season. Sir, you know I got their back. Justin, thank you, you know. so. Go, go You're ahead. You're welcome. Uh, th- okay. Thank you again. I, we'll talk very, very soon. You're welcome.